In this video, we will look at how you can make predictions from both the Base Server Client and the Base Server API. In order to make predictions, you will need to have previously trained a network with Base Server, either from data or expert opinion, or possibly both. We will use a Bayesian network that has already been trained and is included as a sample network with Base Server. The Bayesian network we will use is called Identification Extended and can be opened from the start page as follows. So let's start by querying all the nodes in the network. We can do this by clicking the Run All button down here. This is a small fictitious network that can be used to predict someone's gender or indeed any of the other variables in the network. The simplest way to make predictions in Bayes Server is to set evidence on the variables manually in the client. So before we set any evidence, you'll notice that gender has a probability of being female equal to 51%, a probability of being male of 49%. We have a height with a mean of 169 and a variance of 95.9. So let's set some evidence on hair lengths. Say we've detected that someone has short hair, so let's enter evidence. Notice what happens to the gender variable. Male has increased from 49% up to 88.5%. So given that they've got short hair, the probability of them being male has increased dramatically. Now let's also enter their height. We can do this for continuous variable by clicking on this checkbox here and entering the continuous value. So let's give them a height of 181. Now the probability of being male has increased further to 99.5%. So we're now even more certain that this person is male. Notice that we didn't have to set evidence on all the variables in the network in order to get a prediction on gender. This is something Bayesian networks handle naturally. You notice here that we haven't had to specify a value for weight or build in order to get a prediction. The other thing that's great about Bayesian networks is that they can handle conflicting evidence. For example, if we were to enter a weight that didn't match the height. So let's pin in a really low weight of 60. Now notice that the Bayesian network can handle that without any difficulty and the prediction on gender has updated accordingly. So far we have been predicting individual variables i.e. gender. As well as predicting individual variables we can also predict multiple variables together. So let's try that now. If we clear some of the existing evidence down and click on the Query tab, there is a Custom button here which allows us to predict multiple variables together. So let's try Gender and Height. If we click the Query button, then now we will get the probability of gender and height given whatever ev other evidence is set on the network. If we click on the male cell here, the mean and variance prediction for height will update. Another great feature is the ability to be able to calculate how likely the current evidence scenario is. We can do this via the log likelihood button up here. Before we do that, let's return the height to 181 as we had previously. And then let's click on the log likelihood button. So this value here tells us the overall probability of this evidence scenario, and in this case is 0 0.0173. We also report the, the log of that value, which is minus 4.056. The reason why is explained in the help file. Now let's update the evidence so that it conflicts. As we had previously, let's set weight to 60. Again, let's click the Log Likelihood button. Now, if we look at this figure, it's dramatically reduced. In fact, it's a very small number, indicating that there's something in unusual about this evidence, and it's possibly an anomalous record. Before we move on to setting evidence from data, it is worth pointing out that you can save the current evidence scenario for a later date. If you click the Edit Evidence button, then from the file menu, you can both open and save any evidence scenario for a later date. 
Manually setting evidence in this fashion is great, but sometimes it is time consuming and error prone. So an alternative is to load the data into the UI from Data Explorer. Before opening Data Explorer, let's set up a connection to the database. To do this, we can click on the Data tab and then the Data Connections button. This will list any current connections we have and by clicking the new button you can add a new one. We're going to connect to a, a SQL Server database. You can click the Test Connection button to see if your connection is specified correctly. We now have our connection set up. This will be saved and load, loaded each time we open Base Server and can be used for a variety of tasks. So now let's open Data Explorer. By default, you will see Data Explorer in a tab in the lower left corner of the UI. You can also open it via the View tab. Click the Load button to load some data and select the data connection which we just created. We'll then get a list of tables to select from. We're going to use some test data that is appropriate for this network. Click OK. Then we will see each column from the database table automatically mapped to each variable on our network. Because we're trying to predict gender and this table happens to have the known gender in the data as well, we're going to unmap the gender column. Then click OK and you'll see the data loaded into Data Explorer. We can then simply double click on a row to transfer that record across to the network. If some records happen to have missing data, that's not a problem. They will be transferred correctly as follows. This is great, but what if we want to record the prediction for gender for all of the records in the data table? There is actually a better way of doing this in Data Explorer. We can use a batch query to make multiple predictions against each record in a data set. To do this, click on the Data tab and then the Batch Query button. Again, select the data table of interest. We will stick with the one we were using previously and click OK. Now, again, all the database columns have been automatically mapped to the variable columns. Because we're predicting gender, Let's un unmap gender, but we might also want to calculate some statistics about the performance of our model. So let's add gender in the information tab. Click OK, and this will launch the batch query window. Here we can select anything we want to predict in this left hand pane. So let's say we want to predict the probability gender being male and the probability of gender being female. Let's also output the log likelihood as we did previously manually. In addition, let's output the actual known gender of the person in the data set. Now we can either output the results to the window or to a database. If it happens to be a very large table, then it's usually preferable to output to another table rather than the UI. This is not a large table, so let's just output it to the window. So here you can see for each record we have the output log likelihood, the various predictions that we're interested in, and also the actual value in the data set. As well as enabling us to output the, the raw predictions to either the window or a database, we can also create charts of the outputs plots, histograms, and we can also output statistics such as confusion matrices, lift charts, regression stats, and residuals. As well as making predictions on standard Bayesian networks, we can also make predictions on temporal Bayesian networks such as time series models or sequence models. If we take this example here, we have a multivariate time series model We've loaded evidence from Data Explorer 
and then we have predictions into the future 25 steps for both variables x1 and x2. Now let's take a look how you can make predictions using the Base Server API. There are two APIs available, one for .NET and one for Java. Both are cross-platform. First, let's take a look at how you can make predictions using the .NET API, using Visual Studio and C Sharp. In Visual Studio, create a new C Sharp console application. Then we need to add references to the Base Server API. These will be located in your installation folder. We're going to use the .NET 4 version. Next, let's take a sample code from the help files. We will use the help files that are distributed with the user interface. They're also available online. We're going to click F1. If you navigate to the network class, inside here you'll find some code samples. We'll copy the first one to the clipboard. Then back in Visual Studio, we'll paste that sample over the existing code. Next, run the project. As you can see, the output shows predicted values for A given D equals true, and A given D equals true, and C equals true. This uses a different sample network to the one we've been using previously, but shows you how you can make predictions using the API. Let's now look at how we can make predictions using the Base Server Java API. Here we are using IntelliJ, but you could equally use another Java IDE. So let's create a command line application. Now let's add a reference to the Base Server Java library. This will be located in your installation folder. Now let's add a class. And then we will copy some code from the base server Java API help. This is located online and can be accessed from our website. If you navigate to the network class, you will see there are code samples embedded, which can be copied. So let's copy the first example. And paste it into the main class. Let's rename this class main so it matches and then run the application. So you can see we now have a prediction for A given that D equals true and also a prediction for A given that D equals true and C equals true showing that you can make predictions from the Java API.